EVE301 offered to civil engineering students at College of Science and Technology. I am Kirtan Adhikari, faculty at CST. See you in the course. Let's start with new unit that is precipitation. Precipitation is the collective term used to describe the forms in which water returns to the earth, predominantly rain and snow, but there are other forms such as hail, frost and gaze among others. In our discussion, precipitation is used synonymously with rainfall as other form does not contribute to runoff as much as rain. Let's study about the mechanism of precipitation. So precipitation occurs from air mass containing water vapor that comes to a state called water saturated, whereby the air mass has reached its limit to hold more water. The amount of water that air mass can hold is a function of temperature, which means warm air can hold more water vapor than the cold, water, cold air of the same mass. As the temperature drops to a dew point temperature, then the precipitation occurs. This in fact is a process of releasing excess water it was holding. So the temperature in air mass can drop in the atmosphere in two reasons and the most common are contact with the cooler air or it may get lifted up to very high elevation in the atmosphere. We know that in the troposphere, that is the layer just above the land surface in the atmosphere, the temperature goes on decreasing as you increase the altitude. So once the heated air mass goes on lifting, when it gets lifted, so it reaches to a point where temperature drops and it may reach the dew point and then the precipitation occurs. There are three types of precipitation. The precipitation can be of convective type, orographic type or cyclonic type. Convective precipitation is occurs when the heated air near the ground expands and absorbs more water moisture. Okay, water or moisture. The warm moisture laden air moves up and gets condensed due to lower temperature, thus producing precipitation. Convective precipitation spans from light shower to thunderstorms with extremely high precipitation. This is a localized phenomenon, okay, whereby when there is an, when there is an sunshine, the sun heats the land and the land in turn heats the uh, air, which is just above it, and that air, it starts to rise up because the, rise, uh, the warm air is less heavier than the uh, cooler air. So it starts to rise and then when it reaches to a point, it temperature drops as it moves above, right? It, as it uh, ascends, it, the temperature drops and then there, it causes a, there, uh, there will be a precipitation. Now, oreographic precipitation, these are the precipitation caused by, you know, when the air mass containing the moisture is obstructed by a barrier such as mountains. So when there is a mountain on the pathway of the moisture laden air, it tends to rise. So when it rises, as you know that the altitude decreases with the altitude, the temperature decreases with the altitude and then it reaches to a dew point temperature and then there is shower. Cyclonic precipitation, it is, it occurs when the uneven heating of earth's surface by sun's re sun result high and low pressure region. So we know we know that when there is a sunshine is there, with this uh, cyclonic precipitation usually is a it occurs in a large area. Okay, we are talking about very large area. When there is uneven heating, then there will be high pressure region, there will be low pressure region, and we know that air tends to move from high pressure to low pressure. When that happens, you know there can be of two fronts: the cold. Uh, if the warm air replaces the cold air, then the front is known as warm front or the cold air displaces warm air and the front is known as uh, cold front, okay. That was the earlier one was the warm front and now it is the cold front and whenever there is two air is trying to mix, the warmer air tend to lose the heat and then there will be 
the precipitation. Sometimes the cyclonic precipitation tends to be very violent and it starts to move in rotational move, uh, circulation, circulatory, sub, circulation motion or in a rotation motion and we call this as a cyclone, right? And there will be immense precipitation during a cyclone event. Moving on to it, uh, I have given you a two homework here, which you can submit later on in VLE. Okay. Coming to the measurement of precipitation, now there are two types. Mainly, there are two types of uh, recording mechanism that uh, measurement techniques. Okay. One is the recording type. Now, one is the recording type. It is more advanced. Another one is the non-recording type. Type. The non-recording type is the Simon gauge and there are other advanced techniques as well but the discussion on this advanced technique is the out of our scope of the syllabus. So non-recording type are or this Simon gauge are simple arrangement that are meant to collect rain water. The operator must manually visit the station and record the reading so it uh, for a day or how many duration you have kept this instrument there so it will start to record it as there will be rainfall it, the instrument will record there uh, not it, will, it is not going to record but it is going to collect the water so every 24 hours the person comes and then he sees how much rain has occurred in 24 hours so it does not give how, what was the intensity of rainfall? We cannot get such information from Simon's gate. We simply get amount in 24 hours. Okay. Whereas recording instruments, okay, recording instruments are a bit advanced with internal arrangements such that it records rainfall at a regular interval on a chart. The chart that records the uh, records the rainfall needs to be replaced every 24 hours the advantage of recording gauges are we get the data recorded for definite time which means the data for every 15 minutes is available or any frequency the chart is made available to read you know so that is the advantage we know the intensity of rainfall through 24 hours and likewise in the Simon's gauge person has to go to the station and then change the chart okay so there are three types in fact weighing bucket tipping bucket and natural siphon so here is the, the uh, image of a tipping bucket and this is the you know cross section of a tipping bucket there is an, a bucket here when it gets filled it tips over and it sends electric pulse and this is the weighing type weighing type the main mechanism is it collects the water here because of the weight it's the scale here it's you know it starts to record the in fact it, uh, it starts to record the weight so that weight can be converted to the volume of water later on because we know the volume of this bucket is known density is known then we know how much water has bought so following this i have made a simple video while I was in IIT Roorkee, so please have a look on how exactly the recording is done. So we will continue after the video. Thank you. This instrument is a Simon's rain gauge. So what it does, it it we measure the rainfall, how much rainfall was there since yesterday. So the arrangement is very simple. There is a funnel here. And when water is, when there is a rainfall, the water gets collected into this measuring cylinder. Since there was no rainfall yesterday, so it is empty. And it is non-recording because the arrangement is such that it just records the amount. It has no arrangement which does the recording itself. It just, it just, uh, it just, I mean, the water volume is been collected here so thus it is known as non-recording and there are other types which are the recording type recording types are, uh, are those rain gauges where the arrangement is made to do the self reading so human does not need to uh, does not need to visit it time to time to do the reading it does the reading in this form of chart so let's go there so this is So 
this is a self-recording rain gauge. It's a natural siphon type rain gauge. So you can see the arrangement. It's a bit complicated here. So there are various arrangements here. So there is a drum, okay? And there's a chart over here. And there's a scale here. So whenever there is a rainfall, rain is getting collected here into this chamber. There is a chamber here where there is a float. Okay, and when when the water surface right when there is rainfall, water surface rises and it will <coughs> this instrument will do the reading. So thus we get the rainfall over the time. So to do now, yesterday I have changed the chart. So again we need to change this chart today exactly at 8:30. So today right now the time is 8:30. So I'll be changing this chart. For this, what I do is I will simply take this here okay remove this clip and take out the chart now we can do the reading see uh, so this is a November month so there was no rainfall See, so there is, it is not recording anything, it is a straight line at zero, which means there is no rainfall, it was, there was no rainfall yesterday. And to change the chart, what I do is, I simply put this chart here, the actual procedure is to remove this drum and fix this chart. But to just to save time, I will be doing it this quickly here. So... Now I have fixed the chart, I will clip it, yes, and I need to set the timer, so there's, there's, you can see there is a reading here, which is the time, and it is right now it is 8.30, so I will exactly make this at 8.30 yes so this is done now I said this is siphon type so what I need to do is I need to add some water here to calibrate it so I will be adding water You can see when I add water, this level will rise because there is a float inside. Observe it. Okay, done. Done. Welcome back to the presentation. So I hope uh, now you are aware how actual in in real how reading has to be taken so now let's say these are the two charts retrieved from the siphon type rain gauge so what i expect you to do is i want you to develop independent mass curve from this chart so in fact this is a mass curve okay so how you are going to retrieve mass curve is you have to take out the readings every 15 minutes so this chart was as I have explained I have started at 830 so from 830 started at, at the point when I started the stay uh, started the instrument there was no rainfall so it was no rainfall till 11 then at 11 there was rainfall right 
then then the rainfall continued and when it reaches here there's an internal mechanism whereby it cannot hold more water it with the help of a siphon effect it tries to remove the excess water so when it removes the excess water the marker again goes to zero and again it starts to record here so which means this recording is in fact you need to add this value plus this value would give the total amount of rainfall at this time so this is 2 2 pm so at 2 pm would be whatever it is here plus this value whatever you read it here so likewise you can retrieve retrieve the data at every 15 minutes so each line here do you see the line so this line is 15 minutes interval okay so take out the mask curve and also you can develop the hato graph so with this i would like to end this slide here thank you